This time of the year down here in November, the weather changes at the drop of a hat. You have cold fronts that are starting to make their way down, and we happened to time it just as a cold front was approaching. It lended itself to what we wanted to do. You have to be able to adapt to the, the variables in the weather here, and this time of the year, things are changing so quickly that you just have to stay in front of it. The Mississippi Delta Flyway is a path that these birds take from Canada down into Mexico. Venice, Louisiana happens to fall just dead smack right in that flyway, which makes it such a great destination for duck hunting. Um, it has the perfect environment for these birds to stop off on making their way down in the winter time, and the timing is just perfect. This is the time that they're here, this is when the duck hunting is some of the best, and you have so many opportunities to get an easy limit every day when you're in Venice. You know, there's a lot of it as far as satisfaction when it comes to duck hunting. I, I, again, I, I thoroughly enjoy bringing people out there, putting them on the birds, having successful hunts. Uh, to me, getting out there and, and, and getting back is part of the satisfaction for me, especially when you have a limit of birds. Not that that's always the case, and that doesn't by any means uh, ruin a hunt for me, but it's, it's always a, a nice feather in your cap when you can finish out with a good limit. But. Uh, just getting out there, successfully seeing these birds, uh, making sure that you have the numbers and the quality to, to have good hunts, and just seeing people's uh, smiles after the hunts. So we're in a wildlife management refuge, and it was interesting, we see all those mud boats running around, you said they're not allowed in here. Yeah, this is water-cooled engine only. So we have a, a true water-cooled outboard on the back of this one, so we can be back in the pond with that. But you cannot run an air-cooled motor back in here. It's illegal, you'll get tickets, what have you. So they try to give the birds a little bit of a rest, because those mud boats can run pretty anyway. much anywhere they want to go. Yeah. So the birds never get a rest. Shooting is done by noon, we have to be out of here by one o'clock. Is that for everybody hunting or just the wildlife? And that's the manager there here to single out front. Let's get him. Get him, George. Get him. Nice shot! <laughs> uh, the one thing I didn't know about George is uh, how good of a shot he was, to be honest with you. He kept telling me he'd only been duck hunting one time, and uh, he swung across and came around from the front of a group of teal that came in, and he shot a true double with a single shot. Look at that <laughs> Give me something. You just shot a double! <laughs> <laughs> Blind squirrel gets a nut every now and then. The teal is, is a bird that uh, is the smaller of the waterfowl, and uh, they, they come across in flocks generally, uh, you know, from five to upwards of a hundred at a time when they come in, and they fly exceedingly fast, and they can change direction like you would not believe. So just when you think you have them, you take the proper lead and you shoot, they turn back another direction, and then you're trying to follow back up. But, uh, um, and I've, I've never turned down a teal. It's one of the better eating birds out there and uh, I think they're a blast to shoot. You are uh, every bit as good a hunter as you are a fisherman, <laughs> brother, because you made some incredible shots today. A true double with a single shot. Uh, that was two today. I had one and you had one. You just don't see that very often, man. That's a lot of fun to come out here in the morning and do this, and then have the ap afternoon to be able to go out there and catch some fish. Oh, and the sun's coming out, just about the right timing. Probably go out there and get some sight fishing reds going on. <laughs> no better day. That's a beautiful thing, man. Thanks so much, brother. Thank I appreciate you, it. Thanks for enjoying awesome that with morning. me. morning. George, we uh, 
Had a pretty successful hunt this morning. That was a good morning. And, uh, it's funny how the weather completely changed. Skies are bright, blue skies. So we put the tower in the front of the boat. We're gonna go do what uh, some of the stuff I do best and go sight cast some redfish right now. I tell you what, that's a lot of fun. We saw some fish, uh, you know, yesterday. But to be able to see them, see the ones you're targeting, a big old tower up there. I'm excited to get there and give what that. What a difference uh, a day makes in weather, oh. huh? It is so beautiful out here right now. I am just absolutely amped to get out here and find some of these redfish. Should be a good afternoon. Indeed, brother. There's so much water here but we had a specific thing that we had to find. We had to find a leeward shoreline with clean water. So it's more of a hunt to find where the fish would even be. Not even so much finding the fish, as I have to find the environment that makes it right for me to be able to catch those fish. Pull this down. Right there, he's going away from us. You see him? Back in the corner, swimming this way, toward that grass. Got to get him before he hits that bank. He just came back at us. He's sitting sideways right there. 12 o'clock to you, right there. Yep, no, no, no. Right there, 12 o'clock coming right at us. No, I don't got him. Oh, right here? Right there. Oh, that's a different one. I'm going for this one. Here he comes. Nice. Another one with him. See if another one comes out. God, I don't know why yours didn't eat. He I came up and nosed it. Did he? Did you pull it down? Yep, holds it down. Keep looking here. We got a couple fish right there. This is a beautiful fish. Nice job. I mean, you think back when you were a kid and you sat on a dock and watched the fish. That was, you know, that was, to me, was everything. It's almost like an aquarium. You're sitting there, you're just, you're looking at them and anywhere I go, even, you know, to this day, when I'm looking in the water and I'm seeing fish, I'm thinking, oh, can I catch that one? I don't see a big body of water and go, I just want to throw a jig in there and see, you know, and to me, it's, that's not it. But if I, can, if I can picture that target, if I can see that fish, you're not just blindly casting. It brings another element into it where you have to make a good presentation. You have to you know, determine which way the fish is going, how fast he's going that way, where does the bait need to be, where do I need to intersect him, what kind of presentation do I need to, to make to him, do I need to be fast, do I need to be slow, and how does he react? You have to be able to change your presentation with the way he reacts. Got him. Oh. Great strong fish, kicking my butt. I lost that one and then I saw that other one pop up. Look at the color. Look at that, amazing. Unbelievable fish, man. How cool is it to see him from up here and to be able to sight cast it, that? I, it never gets old, man. I've caught thousands this way, but I'm telling you, it's the same adrenaline rush every time it happens. So cool. So much fun, such a beautiful, look at the color. He is just, oh. God, unbelievable. Good job. Yeah, I, I appreciated uh, what George wanted to do. He kind of took what I take deer, which is my sight fishing, and, and wanted to experience that. Uh, you know, a lot of guys come down here and, and, and fish with the guides, and it's, it's a pop and cork bite. It's kind of some fishing. You go out there and you, you tip a little bait on your jig head. You go out there and you start popping, and you kind of call the fish to you. Um, I really prefer to kind of stalk these fish. I like to see them eat. I like being up high looking at those fish and, and, and George really embraced that. He told me, he said, look, he's like, I'm not worried about size. I just want to go over there and see, you know, how you kind of go through the marsh and you, you work these fish and what you do. And, you know, we had great success doing it. And uh, again, George being the angler he is, he had no problem seeing those fish and catching them. It was fantastic. Yes, yes, twitch, twitch. Got it, yes, nice, that was awesome. <laughs> Keep out of that. Oh, that was fantastic, nice cast. That's so exciting. God, it's so cool to see him like that. He's just inching along. Ooh. I think Venice is 
one of those locations where if you're an angler, you have to come and visit once. You have to experience this type of fishery to, to experience this type of sight fishing. Um, it's just different than any other place I've traveled to before. Um, and like I said, the fish are so willing to take a bait. It, it, the big thing here is finding the fish. So many times, so many destinations that you go to, you have to find the fish and then you have to, it, finding them is half of it and then you gotta convince them to bite. Here, if you find them, you're gonna get the bite. He's working you on that light tackle. <laughs> the best of angle here. There he is, right there. That's a great fish. <laughs> Real good fish. Brother, I take a lot of people sight fishing. And I can tell you that it's not easy to do. And you've done it with me a couple times now. You tend to make it happen every time. That is a pretty, pretty red fish. Yeah, you pointed him out. Great job, dude. Really good job. Yeah, look how orange Look that at one. that jig head. <laughs> Woo! Son. That is a thick fish. Look at that beautiful tail. See how nice and that, that is color. just. Everyone looks different. That's the crazy thing. Every one of them is different. These fish are it's lit like up. the color of the strap almost. Yeah. Sun's come out. You know, that they've had some fronts come through. Right now they're lit up and they're just ready to feed. And that's what they do. They just get all lit up. I tell you, there's nothing better than sight casting. Dude, Dude that was awesome. That's Great nice. presentation. I mean, it's just, that is a thick, thick fish. As a destination, as known as a fishing destination, people travel from all over, not even the United States, but all over the world to come here to experience this fishery. Coming with something like a hybrid boat is perfect. You could be fishing inshore one day, duck hunting, and the next day, or even that, that afternoon, you could run 20 miles offshore and be fishing a rig and catching tuna or any other type of pelagics that are out here. So, that's what's cool about it. You come here, inshore, offshore, hunting, fishing, has everything to offer, not just redfish. This area is a area that survives on the oil industry. And coming from Florida, you don't see that. You're not used to seeing rigs and oil heads and pump stations out in the middle of the Gulf. It's, it's a unique sight to see when you're not ex experienced or exposed to it. That structure is somewhat out of place, but also when you get out into the Gulf though, this artificial structure is what creates such a great fishery at the same time. I got a fish. Triple tail? I don't know. Good fish. Get us away from the rig. Yep, it's a good fish. Yep. We got one, George. I think so. There he is. Look at him. Good fish. Holy cow. Is that a black drum? Oh, it's a big drum. <laughs> big old black drum. Ah, hold us. Fishing for triple tail. Let me get a. These are pretty common? Oh, yeah. They, they, you know, we catch them a lot inside the bays, but I mean, they frequent out here. I mean, same as anything else. Nice slow hit. <laughs> Look at that thing. God, Prehistoric, hold. man. Prehistoric. He sucked it down. <laughs> I, I thought I had the rig. A little variety, huh? Yeah, man. Yeah, that stuff's out here. I mean, it's you get your redfish, you got your triple tail, your sea trout, your speckled trout, obviously what we call them down here. And I mean, black drum. That's the cousin to the redfish right there and they get just as big as those bulls. Trolling motors were once thought of as an accessory used only on flats and bay boats. But with the power of motor guide, even large center consoles are benefiting from the use of these motors. Gone are the days of drifting over a spot where your bait is presented to a fish for just a short period of time. 
Now with the push of a button on remote, your boat stays put, regardless of wind, waves, or current. Whether you fish inshore or offshore, if you're fishing without a motor guide, you're just not fishing. Motor Guide XI-5 with Pinpoint Anchor Mode. Look for a motor guide at a retailer nearest you. The oil rigs provide structure out in the Gulf. Any kind of structure, artificial structure, natural structure is what holds fish. It holds fish because it holds bait. Kenny. Sean wanted to go by one of these rigs and catch hardtails. They look like little blue runners. Um, and that's a great bait to use here. The rigs are notorious for holding red snapper. We tried a bunch. Um, we kept getting broken off and that's, that's part of it too. You gotta imagine that there's this artificial structure down there. These fish know it's almost like snook fishing at home. As soon as you hook one, they run into the structure. So we decided to switch gears. We're gonna go out onto a, a natural rise on the bottom uh, and any type of bottom typically in the Gulf is gonna hold uh, snapper and grouper. So we went out to an area that went from, you know, maybe 240 feet of water up to, you know, 195 feet of water. And as soon as we got to this area, you saw the amount of fish that were down there, clearly marking the schools of red snapper. Um, and you drop a bait down there, it doesn't take long, and, and you're gonna get bit. There he is. Nice. Good job. Yep. The slow method, bait on the bottom. Not my preferred method, but it works. So the limit is two per person? Two per person. Is there a size limit? Yeah, 16 inches, minimum. These are pretty prolific out here. They are, man, I'll tell you what. This kind of saves the day a lot of times when it's hard out there trying to catch some tuna well, and things like that. open now, which is a weekend thing. Correct, here. only open on the weekend. Recreation, got color. Let's not get sharked. There he is, red snapper. Nice, beautiful. There we go. Troll car right in the corner. Just drop that circle hook down there with the bait on it. Don't set the hook, just reel it up. Good eating size right there, right? That's perfect, man, I'll tell you what. On the grill? We put that scale side down, a little Tony Sachery, some butter. What? You boys are in for a treat tonight. <laughs> make your tongues, make your brains right For up. sure. Nothing like some fresh Gulf table fare. Pretty Perfect. fish. Going on the Yeti. Very regulated, highly regulated, probably one of the, the most regulated bottom fish out there. Um, really, I come from the east coast of Florida and we catch some, but the season is open just minimally. I mean, you know, a handful of weekends a year, it's open. Um, it is a huge commercial fishery and they have a stronghold on the on the quota for, for that so it's nice to be able to come here to fall on a weekend where it's open every weekend apparently is open here in in the gulf off of louisiana and it's a great table fare it's a great fish to catch they have a, a you know a pretty reserved uh restriction on keeping two per person so our plan was to go out get our limit and uh, throw them in the yeti and and cook them up on the grill that evening because they are really good eating. Wow, that's a good one. That's a little better. Another perfect size for the chest. Oh, you on? I'm on. Look at that. Just ah. short of having the true double. Oh, big shark down there. Oh yeah, that's what I figured. They're monsters. Big shark. I know you got big hammerheads. We got some hammerheads out here that Make your skin crawl, to say the least. It's bad. See if I can avoid paying the tax, man. Woo! Nice. Ah, our limit. I don't mind that at all. Nice, quick limit on these. Didn't donate any tackle. And honestly, the perfect eating size. We got bigger ones, but I prefer to let them sit down there and make more of these. Incredible. Inshore, offshore, hunting, fishing, it doesn't matter. Venice has it all to offer. Didn't we shoot some ducks yesterday too? <sighs> <laughs> so much fun in this place. Pretty fish, man. Get him on ice. So healthy, you got it, brother. Nicely done.
got a couple here to clean. These trips are not only revolve around the hunting and fishing, but they revolve around the food. And that, I, I keep talking about the experience, and that's part of the experience. To come home and to have a great meal and to, you know, to share stories and, and to sit back and have some adult beverages and, and, and share a great meal after a great day on the water or a great day out in the woods is, is half of it, you know. It's, and you come here, you eat well, you fish well, you hunt well. You make the most of every minute when you're here. Your, your time here is limited, you know, we're here for four days, but every minute is cherished, every minute is, is capitalized on, and it's not hard to fall asleep at the end of the day. It's just a great time, man, it's just, it, whenever you're in Venice and you have a group of guys down here, you're experiencing and doing what we do, spending that time, it, it's, it's not always about being 100% successful and catching these big limits of fish and things like that, it's about being together, Part of that is, is great food and you know the camaraderie that, that comes with it and, and Venice just brings it all together and makes it whole.